Yeah, go on. He's yeah. got eleven stab wounds in his torso. From he got basically like they did him over when he stuck up for a girl who was getting beaten up. But you'll see this kid, no skill, can't really box that well. Yeah. But he'll jump in. He was what was it, sixty kilograms? He was jumping in with super heavyweights, getting dropped, getting back up, swinging, going for it. And you're like, yeah. you can't teach that. That kind of heart, that kind of that toughness, you can't teach. Yeah. And that's what you're looking for in a fighter. You're looking for that, like Liam Cameron's got that. That hardness that comes from overcoming things in your whole life. Mm. You know, that's why, so when I, when I train people, I'll, I'm always interested in their life story because I want to know, what did you overcome to get here? Because that some, people, some people don't uh, have anything to overcome, does it? And if, you, if you've got somebody who's, for, instance, for example, David Adelaide, He's from money. Is he going to make it? We'll see. He's, he's not had to overcome anything. Anything. He's had. Uh, I can explain it. He's had a good school and all that, but he's dedicated. But when the going gets tough, will he be as hungry as somebody who's from a council estate? We'll see. Because I remember he was at college with a lad that I trained, and it was so funny. They were telling us the stories. Like he was like the playground bully. David boy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, he he had a lot of kids on the ropes. I mean, then people got, got shaken down for for dinner money and oyster cards and stuff. What's an oyster card? Uh, it's what you used to travel in London. Oh yeah. But what's going to happen when you meet someone who's big like he is, strong like he is, tenacious like he is? What's that next level? What's he got? What's that next gear he can slip into? We don't know yet. It'll be intriguing to find out. But let's take for let's say for example, let's say you're a six foot six person from Edmonton. Yeah. You walk into a boxing gym and they go, right, can you jab? And you can just about jab, you can just about throw a one two, but you're big and you're strong. And they go, right, we're just gonna fast track you. And they get you all the sparring in the world, you spar, guys that go on to be world champions and so forth. You you flukily win the ABAs because the guy that was meant to beat you doesn't. You win a GB championship because the guy that was meant to beat you there, Armin Isa, falls apart. Now all of a sudden you're in the GB setup. You haven't had to overcome anything. You've had an easy run of it. Yeah. You're in the GB setup. Then they go, right, you're going to go and do the Olympics. You get to the Olympics. You're gifted three or four decisions. Joshua. I don't know. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, no, 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 no so you're not professional. No, yeah. so Joshua's not from Edmonton, so can't Oh, yeah, yeah, go on, so, yeah, yeah. So you go from that straight into the pros and you've got hand-picked opponent, hand-picked opponent, hand-picked opponent. And a budget, that means when there's a soft title defense, you can take that. Now you're a world champion and you haven't had to overcome anybody. You haven't had to fight someone who's as good as you are. And then you fight an old man who used to be as good as you are now. Yeah. And for a few rounds, he remembers what he used to be. And he tests you. And you fall apart, and all that saves you is that he's an old man, and he's not hungry enough to take your head off. And then after that, you become scared to be the, the tough guy, you become scared to be the dominant force you thought you would be. And then maybe you meet a little fat guy from Macclesfield, tattoos, speaks a bit of Spanish, and he just says, do you know what, I've been screwed over my whole life, especially my boxing career. I'm not leaving this ring without that title, they're going to have to kill me. And all of a sudden you fall apart because you haven't had to overcome anything. And in that fight, you, haven't, you didn't know how to overcome, your corner didn't know how to get you to overcome anything, you didn't have anything in you, you were hollow. So what were, so were you picking in that fight then, Joshua Ruiz? Uh, well, if a guy from Edlington were to fight a guy from Macclesfield, I'd always back the guy from Macclesfield, especially <laughs> if he speaks Spanish. <laughs> no, seriously, Terry, who do you think, stories apart and banter apart, we've had a bit of a giggle, but who do you think is going to win next week? Mm. Joshua or Louise? I, I, I genuinely think rematch is going the same way as the first fight. Because my question is, if your two guys are at the top of your game, and these things are decided by 0.1 of a percent. This is marginal, the difference between winning and losing. What are you going to do in three months that's going to be that much different that you're able to... Well, it's six months back to though, isn't it? No, but you mean the three-month camp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terms of, terms of actually working on fixing things. 
what, what basically what are you going to do in 100 days camp because that's what his camp's been in it what are you going to do I, and I can't I can't see it I've got obviously I've got a friend of mine who's in camp with them but I'm like I, I don't see it yeah. I, I think if they did the rematch this time next year I'd lean towards Joshua because I think you can fix a lot of those things. This is why I think they should have had a, a tune-up fight. I, I, I think they should have just let Ruiz go. And here, excuse me, here's why. It would have been hard for him to hang on to the belts. The belts would have scattered. Yep. That would have left Joshua in position to fight for one of those belts and then go about... Because now he doesn't need all four belts. We don't care about the belts anymore. We just want to see him yeah. versus Wilder or him versus Fury. That's all we want to see now. Yeah. And I, I think they've missed the trick. But I just think... If Ruiz hasn't fallen off, he wins. So it's a question of, has being a world champion taken something out of him? Has it done a Buster Douglas on him? We don't know. He doesn't strike me as that sort of guy because Buster Douglas was never a guy who thought he deserved to be world champion. He was a guy who thought he was good. And then against Tyson, he just said, look, I'm going to do this for my mom. And then he just reverted back to who he really was. I think Andy Ruiz genuinely believes he's one of the best. I think he, he I think he believes he's unbeatable because I had him beating Parky you now. I know what Peter Phil used to say to me, right? Well, I've done two camps with Peter, right, with you. I've been spent a lot of time with him, and I asked him about Andy Ruiz. You know what Peter Phil used to say to me about Andy Ruiz? He used to go like that, and I was thinking, what? Maybe I didn't get it. He, he went under the radar, didn't he? He has an unusual style, and you can't prepare for it. He's fastest anyway in world boxing at the moment, isn't he? Speed wise. Now nah, I saw your video, mate. You're up there. But when you look at Ruiz's style, his punches aren't textbook. Yeah. But they're so fast, they're so accurate, and they've got power on them. It doesn't make sense. Like, I talk to friends of mine who are trainers, and I go, Try doing that on the bag, try doing that on the pads. It's hard to do. And so, what can you, Joshua can't prepare for that. I've seen some of the videos where he's trying to catch and counter. I'm like, you don't want to try and catch and counter with a Mexican because that's going to leave you trapped on the inside and he's going to eat hooks and uppercuts from positions you're not used to seeing them. So if you're Joshua, it's like, okay, I'm going to keep it long. But then Ruiz is like, you did that last time and I dealt with it. Yeah. And also, Joshua's stamina becomes an issue. Can he do 12 rounds at the pace that Ruiz is going to have to force him to work at? I don't know. There's so many questions, Russ. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting scenario that we're going to be up against now. But, for, but for boxing, I want Ruiz to win. And the reason I want Ruiz to win is twofold. One, I want to see him get that massive payday. And yeah. hopefully we get a unification. For Joshua, and I know people like to think I'm a Joshua hater, I'm not. I'd love to see Joshua take these two defeats, rebuild, With come back at the trainer. top level. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. But rebuild and come back as a completely different character boxer. And maybe come back as himself instead of this country man. Yeah, and then win another world title and win it legitimately this time, not against Charles Martin. And then, then let's have a second go around with Joshua. I'd like to see Because he had a gift for a world title, didn't he? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it was a Gary Cornish type fight, wasn't it? Yeah, I just... He lasted as long as Cornish, didn't he? Martin. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, I think Huey Fury against AJ is a good fight. No, you? no, yeah. no, I don't. Huh? I really don't. You think Huey takes him distance? I, I just... I... I'm... Do you think Huey will never win a world title? I'm bored of Huey Fury. Like, how many chances do you need? And all we want to see you do is just put hands on someone. That is it. That's all we're asking for. And you seem to be enabled to... Enable to you can't do that. Why? Do you think it's a mental block that Huey's got? I don't think he wants to box. You know, you know when you're in a gym, Russ, right? And you've got young lads. You know who wants to box. You know who doesn't. And there'll be kids that will come to training every session and they'll, they'll get in the ring and they'll spar, but they'll never show you that edge that says, mate, you really want to win an ABA title. They'll never show it to you. And so you know you've got to have a talk with them that says, mate, you're more than welcome to come down and spar, but we understand that this isn't really for you, so the choice yeah. is yours. And Huey's at that point now, we're like, mate, do you even want to do this? Yeah. 
Because if you want to do this, then you've got to play to win. And he's not playing to win. I think he could. If Huey Fury just said, you know what? I've got a solid chin. I've proved it. I'm, going to, I'm just going to walk forward and take people out. I want to just throw straight rights and left hooks at their chin and see how quickly they fall down. That's what I want to see from Huey Fury. And until I see that, I have zero interest in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh I'm gutted for Huey. I don't think that uh, it did his confidence any good being robbed. Not his confidence, what's the word? Mentally, I don't think the Parker loss did him any favours because I thought he performed out of his skin, mate, to beat Parker that night. But he didn't get the decision. And can you recover from that? Will John Ryder come back from that loss against Callum Smith? I think Ryder will because Ryder's had these setbacks his whole career. Yeah, he, he's got the bit between his... He's always been the B-side, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. Uh, whereas with Huey... Look, that Parker fight, let's be absolutely clear, Parker's not that good. Right? I put Parker at the same level I put Chisora, this version of Chisora. Not peak Chisora, this version of Chisora. That's where I put Joseph Parker. He's not that good. Yeah. I think if Tony Yoka fought Joseph Parker now, Tony Yoka beats him. Yeah. He's not that good. He's one of those manufactured champions that just found a way to create this this fictitious character who's meant to be good, and I don't buy it. Yeah, it's uh, so it's exciting times ahead, as uh, Mr. Bean said. Now I want to cover uh, the sky bias that is getting a lot of hate, heat. A lot of talk, everybody's talking about it. Andy Lee, Macklin, Mr. Bean, Tony Bellew, Coldwell, all these people across the board are all the like it's like a cesspit at the moment, isn't it? They're pushing the company narrative. Do you think it's now out of control, Terry? So Adam Smith has to because he's a Sky employee. He's not a contractor, yeah. he's an employee of Sky. So I get why he does it, but actually to defend Adam Smith, Porky, he's like that anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's not pushing it, that's just it. That's it's him. It's ingrained in him from college, innit, or university. He's, not, he's just excitable. That's what he is. He's an excitable guy, and because he's not really from the sport of boxing, he... You should have seen how exciting he used to get hanging around Brendan's years ago, and I were about 24, 25 years old. You should have seen him then, mate. Yeah, but you, you, you were hanging out at the back of Prince Nazim, mate. He was going to his house and everything. That's a true story. It's a nice house. What? The one on... That one... By Door. The, yeah, what was the road called? It's I don't know road, but it was, it's up near Dan's. But he used Ring, to, ringing Low Road. He used to go up there, right? And he'd be up there all the time, even out of hours. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he just loves boxing and loves hanging around boxers. I don't know, but maybe Adam Smith is gutted that he was born into money and he wanted to be a street person. I don't no, know. I don't, I don't think it is. I think, I think he, unlike you, Russ, I think he understands the route to making money in boxing. I know, yeah, unlike me. And, and he just yeah. flies dead straight. He goes, look, this is what we need to do to keep our, our subscribers happy. I'm going to give them this. You know? If you speak to him off the record, he says some really interesting things. And I, I, I respect his views on boxing off the record, which is why I'm not going to give him a stick. Um, as for the other guys, think about what Sky is, Porky. I, I always ask this question. Why would middle-aged men with families want to leave their families and go down to London or go off to Vegas for a week on an all-expenses-paid trip? Because they're getting paid. That's how I don't think it's just getting paid, mate. Because they could get paid doing anything. They like the limelight because they don't got no limelight no more, have they? Now they're not boxers. They like the jolly. That's what it is. They like the jolly. They like the fact that the hotels are paid for. They like the fact that you get a day rate. They like the fact that if you want to go to a club, it's all taken care of for you. All you have to do is show up. They went to Mayweather's club, didn't they? Strip bar. This is my point. So. When you're on that gravy train, if someone says to you, look, mate, we want to keep you on for another couple of years, we just need you to tone down what you're saying, what are you going to say? Yes or It's not? just lad behaviour, isn't it? You're knocking about with your mates, being a boxer, and you just don't yeah. want to lose that being drink. in the limelight. You're, on the, you're in the limelight, you drink, yeah. 
food, all paid for flight, business class, it's think, all, think about all it thrown in. You think that's what it is? Think, think about it like this. Hearns managed to attract more females to the sport of boxing than any promoter has, right? So you're walking around. Well, the platform, though, aren't and, it? And you're, and you're in, let's say you walk around and you're pundit X. Den's not signed up. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Women are going to be like, oh my god, that's so and so, right? So now you're like, well, we're staying at the Intercontinental Hotel. I mean, give me a ring when, when you're finished. Come and meet us for a drink. We're going up to the bar. And a lot of these guys do this. Like, if you, because sometimes I'll pop up to that bar because it's, well, it's not far from where I used to live. And that's what it is. It's, it's that. And so people find that addictive. And the sky say, look, we want to keep you on, but you've got to toe the line. You're going to toe the line because you don't want to get kicked out of that circle. You think there's a lot of orgies go on, Terry? Well, I won't go that far. I, I think there's a lot of bad behaviour. I don't know if it's orgies. Well, I know about some bad behaviour and that, but I haven't heard anything about any orgies. Uh, don't get yourself sued, Porks. I haven't heard anything about any orgies. I've heard that there's some loutish behaviour and people get a few beers down them and say what they shouldn't and then they don't get the contracts renewed, but... Yeah, but like I said, boxing's a game for politicians. If you're not a politician, You'll always be on the outside looking in. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. But hasn't this battery died yet? Nearly. <laughs> uh, <have> a look. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 11 minutes till it goes. Uh, so, moving on then, we'll finish off with. <laughs> Lewis Ritson. We're going to give Lewis Ritson a bit of PR. And why? And Jaffa, Phil Jeffries, well... I don't care about any of them, so... Don't you care about any of them, no? Nah, Why not? Nah, he had his chance, man. Like, when he was just knocking people out, and then it turned out he was garbage. Then he showed up with acne on his back, and I was like, what's going on here? Nah, I don't mess with him, so... What do you think is going to happen now with Dave Caldwell? Because all he's got now is Anthony Fowler and... Hopi Price. Hopi Price, and obviously he's got Jordan Gill, hasn't he? Yeah. I think Dave, Dave will all... You think look. he's burnt a lot of bridges in boxing? No. Nope. No? I really like Dave Caldwell. I didn't used to, but I met him at one of the public workouts and we had a conversation. And one thing I take from Dave Caldwell is he's a, he's a boxing survivor. He knows how to survive in the sport. And he knows... Is he trustworthy? I don't think anyone is in boxing. You don't get nowhere if you're trustworthy. Nah. You? you got to do what's best for you. Like. Russ, you don't feel Caldwell's kids. I don't feel Caldwell's kids. Yeah, he's going to do what's best for him. Yeah, right? he's only accountable to... Whether we like kids. it or not, this is what I have a hard time getting around. When I see it in front of my eyes, not nothing to do with him, but when I have heard stuff like that. Some of the things I see, I can't get my head around it, Terry. This is why I'm I'm, I'm like, let's look at all this here. I've gone through a lot of time and effort and expense to get my point across, I know, it's, it's an expensive carry-on, isn't it, There's, you know, you, you know some petrol bills for starters, all this here, it's all Can time and effort. The, that tripod's not cheap, people don't realise Best one that. you can get, that tripod. Yeah, no vibration on there, so it's it's good, I mean those dumbbells weren't cheap, <laughs> computer might have been though, but, <laughs> I mean, it looks pretty hefty, I bet you got up your microphone game though, right. <laughs> That's just a gimmick. Ah, Ray. It needs a battery in it. it needs a battery in it. It's. Uh, but no, I, I just think I'm not happy with a lot of things that I see. Uh, what aren't you happy with, Paul? I'm not happy with people who are promoters pushing the company line out. Sorry, I'm not happy with certain promoters 